This morning, we want to clear up any confusion about when and who should seek out monoclonal antibody treatment after someone has been infected with COVID-19 or exposed to someone who has it. Doctors have said it can lower your risk of dying from COVID-19 complications and going to the hospital. It's also proven to help reduce your risk of getting the virus if someone in your home has already tested positive. To talk more about this treatment is Dr. Chaluka Katuga an infectious disease doctor with Baptist Health joining us via Zoom this morning. Good morning, thanks for being with us. Good morning, thank you for having me. So uh, it's interesting because based on some of the feedback that we have been receiving from our viewers and from the community, it appears that there is still confusion because this is fairly new when it comes to COVID-19 treatment. And, and I, I'd love to clear that up. So would you explain how does this monoclonal antibody treatment work? Um, absolutely. So uh, when we uh, are exposed to a virus or a pathogen, uh, people make natural antibodies. We may not have natural antibodies yet to a new virus like COVID. So what monoclonal antibodies are, are antibodies that are uh, derived in a laboratory that will help um, fight COVID once you already have it. They are antibodies that target the spike protein of the coronavirus. So given that uh, when someone goes, let's say, to the downtown library, um, which is offering this treatment to those who've been infected, what should they expect in terms of how they would be treated? Is this IV related? Is this you receive shots? So before we used to give it as infusions, but now most of the locations in uh, Florida and Jacksonville give it as a subcutaneous injection. Um, so you would expect four shots and it would be faster than an IV infusion. What you would expect, um, at least at our Baptist Infusion Center, is around an hour and a half. So you would go in, you would get screened, you would get the subcutaneous injections, and then you'd be monitored for a certain amount of time to make sure that you don't have a reaction to the monoclonal antibody. How often, I mean, how new is this? I know it's been used to treat other conditions, but uh, uh, how certain are you in terms of side effects? Um, so we have a, so first of all, this isn't a new treatment by any means. And even for coronavirus, it's, it's not actually a new treatment. Um, we do have enough of it now to give to uh, the general public, which is why everyone is hearing more of it. Uh, side effects are rare, so you can have anaphylaxis, but individuals are being monitored at the infusion center, they get it. Other side effects are nausea, diarrhea, rash, pruritus, and maybe dizziness. But uh, we're very confident if you give it properly that um, it's a safe and um, emergency authorized drug by the FDA. Um, you are not actually supposed to give it if someone is hospitalized, except for some exceptions, and if they are on oxygen or needing higher amounts of oxygen. So if you give it in the wrong setting, in that setting, then there could be um, potential consequences and side effects. Would you explain the window in which it's most successful? Sure, so this is an early treatment for mild to moderate uh, COVID-19. So you should go, try to get it soon after you test positive, and our window is 10 days after symptom onset. And what if someone is has a breakthrough case? They've been vaccinated against COVID-19, they're exposed, they test positive. Should they receive this treatment as well? Do they need it? Absolutely. Um, you can, it doesn't matter if you are break, breakthrough case, vaccinated or not, you can still get monoclonal antibody treatments if you um, have COVID. So what's the difference, doctor, if you, if you could explain, if someone receives a positive test and they start feeling really poorly and they're within that 10 day window, what's the difference in going to the emergency room for treatment or going to monoclonal? What should they, what kind of symptoms would they be experiencing that should di direct them in one direction as opposed to the other? Sure, so mild to moderate COVID means that you can have the symptoms of COVID, fever and chills, body aches, the loss of taste and smell, but you don't necessarily have the sh severe shortness of breath, which would prompt you to need extra oxygen. So you may even have a lower respiratory tract infection, which is moderate disease, but you don't need the oxygen. When we direct patients to an ER instead of an infusion center is if they need, if they experience something called severe dyspnea, if they're having a lot of shortness of breath, especially at rest, if you have the ability to take a pulse oxometry reading, if your reading is less than 90%, and then if you have other signs or symptoms that there may not be sufficient blood flow and oxygen to vital organs of your body, including, so your brain, so your hypotensive, um, if your fingers and feet get blue or purple, um, if 
if you have some chest pain, which could signify a heart attack, or if you're not urinating well, which could signify that there's not enough flow to your kidneys. So really the big, big um, determinant of ER versus outpatient would be the degree of oxygen that you need. Such important information for our viewers, given the rampant spread of Delta variant here in our community. Dr. K, thanks for your time this morning. Absolutely. Thank you.